So it can be really hard to remember God's love and to discern it in the day to day when you're working in the hospital witnessing other people's suffering or even in the hospital as a patient yourself, enduring the pain, enduring the separation from everything that you know to be normal. Or even if you're a loved one grieving and worrying about someone who's in the hospital, it can be really, really difficult. Um, but we see from scripture that God is there throughout all those moments and that his love for us doesn't change throughout all those moments. And when you really dive into scripture and realize that he is merciful and that his steadfast love for us never ceases, then when you observe these things that are happening in the hospital, you can pick up glimmers of his love breaking through. And it doesn't discount the tragedy of what you see, but you can still see his grace and love at work. And one instance that I particularly think of when I'm contemplating this is a, a patient that I took care of shortly after Christ brought me to himself. He was a gentleman who had been in the ICU for months. And anyone who's had any experience with an ICU can tell you that after a few weeks, we can do some really life-saving things, but the longer you're in an ICU, the higher the risk is of you developing one complication after another. And eventually, people will go into this chronically, critically ill state from which it's really hard to recover. And he'd been in for months, and so was very far into that process, and ultimately went into multi-organ failure. And his wife had been by his side throughout this entire ordeal and was with him every single day for months and would hold his hand and would talk to him and would vacillate between all the different emotional states you'd expect. Sometimes she would be stoic, other times she would be near tears, other times she'd be angry at us, of course, all things you'd expect. And then one evening he had an event that was very clear to us was fatal. And I called her and said, you need to come in. And we'd had conversations so many times before. She was used to me calling, but this was different. And she could tell from my voice it was different. And she said, how much time do I have? And I said, please just come in as soon as you can. And she said, well, I'm half an hour away. I'm just leaving work. So his nurse and I tried for the next half hour to keep him alive. And we, I did bronchoscopies and we were doing medications and changing the ventilator and we reached a point finally where we could do nothing more. And his oxygen levels were hovering at about 70, which is not compatible with life. And there was nothing we could do. We looked at each other and this is it. And I just said, Lord, please, please just help him to hold on a little bit longer until his wife can get here. Please just let them have one more moment and I just pray that somehow he would work wonders and the traffic would part like the Red Sea before Moses' staff and let her come through down Commonwealth Avenue, you know. Um, and we kept waiting for the alarms to sound and for the heart, line, heart tracing to flatline. And it didn't. And his nurse and I looked at each other and just in disbelief. And he hovered with an oxygen saturation of about 70 for half an hour. And his wife finally arrived with her coat still up to her chin because it was Boston in the winter um, and rushed into the room. And the moment she held his hand, he died. And yes, the sorrow that he had to endure all this, but that was an answer to prayer that God, because he is so gracious and so merciful, gave them the mercy of one last handhold so that when he crossed over that threshold, just as she'd been there with him through every night, she would be with, there with him that night. And so you see the, the moments of suffering, but you also see these moments when God just is so merciful and provides, and you can't help but be awestruck by his love for us.